soon. And I've already shown you row one, so I will show you row two. So this is how row two is looking. And I have not really paid attention to if colors match or meet or anything. I'm kind of just putting them wherever. Also, it looks like our stream had some trouble starting on YouTube. Um, so you two people just missed the first part with Quilting Life. Okay, I'll redo it. Perfect, thank you. So yeah, this is row two. And I am using just a mix of Minnick and Simpson collections, uh, mainly Mackinac Island. And I'm just using a lot of different backgrounds that I had in my stash. I've even used some Aditya Sitar um, fabrics. So that is my Moda Blockheads too. Um, I'm just sewing along each week and I will start over. So again, that is Moda Blockheads. To get the blocks for free, you would join the Facebook group and each week it will show you who the designer is. And during the week you get the free pattern from the designer page. And then on Friday, Moda will put it on their blog. That way it gets you to the designer page. And so um, I forgot who designed block 26. So um, maybe I can look that up. So also Sherry McConnell of A Quilting Life, she has a free, oops, that's about my life right now. Um, that's so funny. Um, she has a free, uh, how about we just do this in my lap and you just go through that because I cannot hold it together. So Quilting Life, every year she does a free block of the month and each month on the very um, beginning of the month she will have a free block and she offers that free in three sizes so i am making mine six inches in vintage happy two fabric by lori holt and so these are my first six blocks i know she's shown seven i must have left one at home so these are my blocks and I am trying to do different colors like I've got some that are primarily red and blue, some that are yellow and green. I'm trying to do a lot of different things and then some scrappy. I'm trying to just do a lot of different color combinations so that when I put it together and I put it together in whatever setting she picks that it will kind of flow nicely since I haven't seen the setting instructions. So I'm kind of just doing like a mix. And so those are two free pattern resources that you can use to use up your stash. So let me know if you'll have any questions on those two things. That's kind of the thing that I'm doing all year is just keeping up with those two, just because it's really fun. And um, the Moda Blockheads, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it is definitely challenging and it's gonna be really nice how at the end of the year, or actually it's gonna end in 2021, how you have this beautiful quilt and you've spaced it out over time and it really helps. Um, it helps you actually finish because it gives you a space in between. But I do think on that zigzag block, I really should have pressed those seams open. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ashley wanted me to let everyone know that Janet Clare designed block 26. Yes, Janet Clare. And then uh, I see a few comments saying that they're having sync issues with the video. Uh, just refresh your YouTube page and that should fix the problem. Um, and then Wilma Evans was asking for Quilting Life, where do we go to get the patterns? So it is a Quilting Life blog. So it's just a quiltinglife.com, I think. So there should be a link already in the description box. And um, she also has a Facebook group and she has a landing page for it so you can just go each month and get it and she has three different size options for it also mm -hmm. 6 12 and i can't remember the other one i can't remember what the other size was mm -hmm. renee hendrick says uh what fabric was that second star down for a quilting life i'm using all a vintage happy two by lori holt for a quilt for Moda Blockheads. I'm just using um, Minnick and Simpson fabrics and scraps. And I kind of just put it all together so there's no way I could remember exactly. So I'm not sure if that answered the question. I think so. Uh, let us know if we did not. Uh, MJ says, uh, all the blocks are so straight and tidy. Do you attribute that to starching? Yes. Um, so I do starch. I use um, some different things I do. So. I will use triangle paper for these, 
For my flying geese, I use the Eleanor Burns flying geese ruler that I showed last week. That's how those become so perfect. Let's see what else. I'll use flying geese for the, I mean, sorry, half square triangle paper for in here and then the flying geese ruler for in here. These I use triangle paper. I use triangles on a roll. And then here I use triangles on a roll and the flying geese ruler. Triangles on a roll and triangles on a roll. And when I'm done with my blocks, I do trim the edge. I show that in a couple of my videos. Um, I just take the little slivers off and then I keep them stored. Both of these are stored in my um, like little area where I have my blocks and I keep them on the design boards so they don't get, I don't know, and then when I bring them to work, I keep them on the design boards so they don't get kind of all ruffled around. And yes, starching definitely helps. I don't think I could make a quilt at this point in my life without starching. I think I would probably have like a ADD, OCD, freak out moment. I would have a complete mental breakdown if I couldn't starch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, question from Lisa Brown. How many log cabin blocks have you made so far? I think I'm at 32. And so right now I am in the middle of working on the charity quilt for next year and i'm working on the free fall sew along for next year so that's all stuff i can't show you yet but when i'm done with those i'm gonna have a ton left over and then that's where i'm gonna get the majority of the rest of my blocks so with the vintage happy two i think i've already made some um, log cabin with them and also i've already done log cabins with my Mackinac Mackinac island so i kind of do it as i go mm -hmm. Okay, and then Lori Holt says, Hi, Kimberly, and hi, Fat Quarter Shop. I'm still glamping, but I'm able to watch this morning, and that makes me happy. Yay! Aww, yay. I don't think my texts are getting to you. So, like, she's <laughs> um, in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, and so whenever I text her, like, most of the time, she always texts me back. And so, like, I think I've sent her, like, 20 texts, and she's just, like, doesn't get them. Because, I mean, it's Aww. just the Wi-Fi out there. So it's kind of funny, and then I talk to Lori a lot on the way home, so... I haven't been able to call her because she can't answer. <laughs> okay. Um, and then from Janet Sweet Sweatlove, I need to make a simple Christmas quilt for my dad. I have two jelly rolls, but no ideas. Do you have a favorite jelly roll quilt you'd like to suggest? Did we do a Christmas tree, Lily? Didn't we do? We did some kind of design with a Christmas tree. Might have been yes. Charm Pack. I think it was Charm Packs, though. I think it was Charm Packs, yeah. I think you're right. I think it was Charm Packs. Yes. Do you want it Christmas themed or is it just for Christmas? Yeah. I mean, with our jelly roll, um, snowflake, our jelly roll, jelly snowflake. jelly snowflake that we're doing right now would be perfect. And I'm going to show that I can mm -hmm. show it right now. Yeah. So the jelly snowflake is, it doesn't have to be Christmas. It's a free sew along. And so we are on part two. So this week, last week we showed mm -hmm. these two. And then earlier this week, we showed this star right here. Mm -hmm. So this would be perfect, and it uses uh, one jelly roll, mm -hmm. and that'd be perfect. It's not a Christmas tree, though, yeah. but it can, read, um, it can read Christmas, or it can just read every day. And I'm, I'm getting some new side tables, and so I'm trying to decide what I'm going to make for my bedroom for the side table. So I was thinking maybe this might work. And so this is a completely free pattern and you find all the information on our blog because we're always trying to bring you things that are free so that you can use your stash um, and just free resources to bring you back and to inspire you in some way. And we do a lot of different sew alongs. We do try to make them different themes, different fabric choices, different everything so that it will appeal to a large variety of people. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, a few more questions here. Uh, Ingrid Moyle says, could the Blockheads 3 quilt be set on point? Yes, so the Moda Blockheads 3, the way that that is designed is they show a lot of different sizes, like 6, 12, 18. I don't, each of them is different actually. And then they have like probably 20 settings that they're showing that's free. And um, each designer, if you go to their blogs, like if you went to the Moda blog, 
it will tell you every designer working on it and if you go to their blog they all started with the finishing that you could see and um, I just decided to use Lori Holtz because it's a very similar amount and what I liked about Lori's is it's sewn in rows so as you can see when I'm done with row two I can already put it into row one and so um, but I would use the resources of the Moda if you want to do it on point. Uh, Lori says she is not getting your text and she misses talking to you every day on your way home. I know I'm gonna have to go back through and like hit resend. I don't even know how to resend a text. <laughs> oh, I don't even funny. know how to do it. Um, I've just been sending her like photos and so I know they're not going through because she always comments. Mm -hmm. They, If it's not prompting you to resend, it might just send them all whenever she gets cell signal again. Oh, okay. So they'll all just come in <laughs> at the same time. That would be funny. Uh, from Char Ferraro, you didn't use the flying geese ruler on the snowflake quilt. Why? Because we wrote that as Jelly Roll Friendly and the Snowflake ro Ruler will not work with that method. And we try not to write our patterns using the Flying Geese Ruler because if you don't have the ruler, I don't want you to feel like you have to buy the ruler. Mm -hmm. And so a Jelly Roll won't work with that. Like the method won't work with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Marsha Baker says Kimberly has Lori Holt deficiency. I know, you know what I have? I have, de I'm dehydrated. Um, Yesterday I only went to Starbucks twice oh. instead of like four times. And I was like all night, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so dehydrated. <laughs> so this morning I literally had three teas. So um, I uh, had like, yeah, I pulled one from the fridge and then I got some on the way to work. Uh, from Wilma Evans, when you buy fabrics, do you buy fat quarters, half yards, etc.? So what I do is I usually sew from sample yardage. So it just depends. Whatever we have been given, provided for, whatever we can get access to, I will sew with. My favorite thing to sew with is a layer cake So or a fat quarter bundle. So my leftovers that I save, if I'm going to do something way in the future or I just really love it, I'll get a fat quarter bundle. If... Um, if it has a lot of different pieces, then a layer cake will work. But those are the two pre-cuts I use the most. I rarely use jelly rolls, rarely. Um, I would say jelly rolls are not my friend because you ha I like to trim everything. I like everything to be exact. I like, and so I don't like having to trim a jelly roll. No. But we do have some new jelly roll um, triangles on a roll paper that we can show next week and that is wonderful because you can starch and it will work with a jelly roll and it'll come out exact mm. so i plan to use that um, but generally working with a jelly roll it's just like i don't know maybe out of my comfort zone it also makes a mess <laughs> and i don't like messes mm -hmm. the other day i will say i was working um on the weekend and I didn't show it on Kimberly Stitch Squad and Facebook just because I felt like it would give away too much of what I'm working on and it's kind of a secret, but my floor was just trashed, like with triangle paper, like the leftover papers and I had like the biggest mess. It was really funny because I thought, okay, this is not like me. I did like all of a sudden, I did like before I left the room, I did have to like get all the stuff off the floor and vacuum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. I'm a little, a little bit neat freakish hmm. uh, a few people are wondering if you can say the designer's name of the chair the next charity quilt and the fabric line it I cannot say it because it has not been shown to stores mm. um, so I cannot say it it's and we have not decided on the background yet um, so yeah it is um, popular designer I would say Ooh. it's not last year's um, but yeah I can't say yet and I can't say that I don't even actually remember the name of the fabric collection <laughs> I just know that I'm working with it yay uh, put your guesses in the comments below yes um, and then before we move on here we have had several members join and a few super chats uh, so first member that joined was scrap fair knits welcome thank you scrap fair and they spelled fair f-a-i-e-r and I just love when people spell fair that way it's so cute. Um, and then we had a super chat from Valeria Bauer uh, for 1999, and she put a little dancing pair with like a top hat and a cane, Aww. and it says, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Val Valeria. Um, and the new member, we have Dawn Downey. Welcome, Dawn. Yay. Thank you. 
And then another new member, Heather McIns. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. And new member, Lisa King. Oh my goodness. You Lots guys of new are members. Awesome. <laughs> There's a lot of you guys today. Yay. And then uh, Char Ferraro, new member. Welcome, Char. And then we also had a super chat from Real Estate with Marie uh, for $2.99. Uh, and they say hello from Australia. Oh, Australia. Okay, so is it in the middle of the night? I wonder if it's in the middle of the night. Or it's already the next day. Yes, let us know what time it is for you. Awesome. So another sew along that we're doing uses our uh, Jolly Bar book too. It's a very simple book. It's low priced. It's only $9.95. And here, I'll put this in my face. This <laughs> is block two. So with it, um, we're giving you instructions on how to make this quilt. You do need the book though. So right now I'm gonna show you some blocks that we have done out of different fabrics, just so you can see. So can we do this so yeah. that I don't have to hold it up yet? Yeah. yeah, and then I'll show you the quilt. Mm -hmm. So these are Harvest Road by Terry. And so I'm gonna just show you the different colored blocks. And you'll see that some people use, um, they, they duplicate, sometimes they don't. So this is Harvest Road by Vanessa Gertson. This next one is Catalina. And it's sewn by Nancy. So Catalina is fig tree quilts. And so you'll see Nancy makes, she does some duplication, like reverse blocks, if that makes sense. So it's fun to see how everybody interprets their fabrics. And then the next one, I believe this is Summer Sweet. Nope, it's Harper's Garden by Terry and the background is 9900 color 131. Mm. So hers is gonna be super bright. Mm -hmm. And you can see by looking at this, you can really come up with any other, any colorway you would like. Mm -hmm. So we're on row two or block two, and it is a row quilt. And so that is an option right there for you guys. If you have the Jolly Bar book and all the information is on our blog, fabric requirements, uh, release dates, everything. And I'm gonna show you the quilt that I made. Ooh. And it has been so long since I made this quilt that I almost don't even remember making it. So, so the top row and the bottom, I have it upside down, but the top row and the bottom <laughs> row, you've already done. And then that second to the bottom is what we're working on this week. And then I'll show you the back of my quilt. I use Bloomington by Vanessa Gertzen. So on the back, there's very little left over. So I use leftovers from corner squares to make those ha those hourglass blocks. And then I sewed a label in. And so if the quilt is ever stolen or anything like that, it says Kimberly Jolly made in the USA. Hmm. So that is fun. So let me know if you'll have any questions on that. And then I'm going to show you guys some new stuff and I am going to talk about the quilt behind me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Real estate with Marie says uh, it's 1219 in the morning in Australia. Okay. So it's like, how many hours is that? That's 12, 13, 15 hours ahead. Maybe something like that. Something like that. But next day it's Saturday for her. Oh, I wish it was Saturday and I wish I was in bed. <laughs> Okay, uh, from Sharon Left, do I need to have an acrylic template to make one of those? No. Um, from Marsha Baker, Kimberly, what different fee uh, do you have for your Juki and where do you get them? Okay, so for my Juki, I have the feet that came with them. The only thing I use is that little open toe foot and the quarter inch foot. But the one I have at home, I bought years ago, I just called like a uh, sewing machine and vacuum machine shop, like a one that was on the web. 
and got a quarter inch foot. I feel like the quarter inch foot that comes with the Juki is, um, if you look it up, it's measures in centimeters instead of quarter inch, so it wasn't exact enough. But we do have an Amazon affiliate link to one that is very similar to, um, it's actually the exact one we use here, but it's mm -hmm. similar to the one I have at home. Mm -hmm. I just already had the one at home from like literally probably 10 or 15 years ago. Mm. Um, and I don't even know if they make it anymore, but it's, um, so we do have an affiliate link to it. And those are the only two feet that I use. Now I do have some walking feet and I don't even think that I bought them for the Juki. I think I just had them. Mm -hmm. um, and I use a pretty cheap walking foot. So you probably wouldn't want to use the one that I use. Uh, from Gail Stale, has Ki Kimberly found her missing fabric yet? Oh my gosh, no, I have not. <laughs> I really, at this point, I don't know what I did. Like, I'm a little bit concerned that like, maybe my kids like put it somewhere as a joke or <laughs> like, I really don't know. I've opened everything and so I don't have any idea where it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, and I need to use all that leftover fabric to make the log cabin blocks. So I've got to find it. Um, I don't know what I did with it. So yeah, I've lost some fabric. Mm. And it was a lot of fabric. It's not like a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of thinking like maybe my kids, cause you know, they play jokes. Like, I don't know, their new thing is, and it really, oh my gosh, it makes me so mad. I know they're watching. I will go to the bathroom and then when you walk from my bathroom to our bedroom, like the door is here and there's a wall here and here for some reason. I mean, the way our, anyway, they jump out and they get me from both sides. It scares me oh. and I scream and I get so mad. And I told him, I was like, that is for daddy. That is not for me. <laughs> like I screamed at them last time so bad. I was oh. like, don't do it again. I know they're going to do it, but it's like almost like when I walk around my house, but they're bored, like they have nothing to do. They're bored. We did find some uh, some camps to do online that we're gonna try. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I did want to talk about the quilt behind me. It's called Stitchery Sampler Quilt. We're pre-selling it. It's designed by Joanna Figueroa, and so I'm gonna kind of stand up and talk about it. So it is one pattern. You get it as one pattern. It's gonna come as a pre-made quilt kit from Moda. I believe the binding is different. But what we're gonna do in the fall is Joanna and I are gonna have a sew along and I am gonna sew along each week with a block. So it has 12 blocks and then it has quite an intricate finishing. So um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So the first block is pieced. The second block is applique. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. <laughs> this one is pieced. Okay, this one uses 5 8 inch hexagons. So I'm gonna try out a couple of different things to make that, and I am going to watch Tula Pink videos on our channel. Mm -hmm. And um, that is pieced, that is pieced, 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 pieced. So there's one applique, one that is English paper piecing. And so what I'm gonna do with that is I am going to sew all of those and then bring them each week and then just talk about did I use any tricks? Um, you know, did I use triangle paper? I'm gonna put notes with everything. She gave me a, um, like a cheat sheet of what I, like what size things are. So I'm gonna try to work on that in advance and just put notes, but I'm super excited. So we're pre-selling that kit. So in the fall, if you would like to join us, just sign up to get the kit and the backing set. And each week I will show you a block, kind of like I do with Moda Blockheads. I just really loved this quilt when we got to see the fabric collection. I, of course, love samplers. I love anything that is that changes. Um, I'm kind of in the point where I've made so many quilts that when I make something, I want it to not be repetitive. I want to be able to make something that has a lot of different changes to keep me busy and to keep my mind going. Um, and I do tend to work on a lot of different things at one time. A lot of the stuff I work on is way in advance. So um, I like to work on things where I can cut it and then when I, know, when I come back, I know, okay, I've gotta do this, 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 this. Like this weekend, um, I've got like a list. And what I'll do tonight, I'll probably go home like around three or four and I'm going to cut. I've got stuff starched and waiting and I'm just gonna cut stuff 
because I love to cut and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna get up early and I'm gonna power through we might go to the pool tomorrow but I'm not sure we have a big big pool in our neighborhood and it's um, most people in our neighborhood have a pool so when we go if you go like at 9 o'clock nobody's there like no one and so we can go from like 9 to 11 and you'll see like hardly anybody because mm -hmm. um, we're pretty much not going anywhere now we're not going like literally I don't think one of my like I'll go to Starbucks I don't let them go in but they'll mm -hmm. ride with me but I have one kid I don't think he's been in the car for like mm -hmm. he did go on a little um, Kevin's parents rented a house and they went to that house and they didn't leave the house but other than that I mean he hasn't really been in the car Wow. And our school announced this week, so our school, what our school district announced uh, this week was our options are all in school or all online, uh, not half and half or anything like that, which is what we thought it was going to be. So now, you know, we have a lot of big decisions to make on um, what we're going to do because um, I feel that socialization is very important, but I also feel like um, I don't want anybody to get sick. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard as a parent because you're, there's really no right answer and that's okay. But it's, as a parent, I think it's important to know that there is no perfect answer and you have to just do, it's basically like, I feel like I could flip a coin and that would be my answer. Like, I really don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah. Okay, um, so we have some nice comments here. Uh, Stitch by Stitch says, yesterday was my birthday. My husband asked me what I wanted besides the puppy. I said, I want fabric from Fat Quarter Shop. I love Fat Quarter Shop. And she put a bunch of exclamation points. Thank you. Okay, if you get a puppy, put a picture. Ooh, yeah, share it on I Stitch know, Pod, a puppy, please. oh my gosh, I love the way puppies smell. They should make candles. <laughs> I've always thought they should make candles that smell like the puppy Aww. smell. See, Lily would buy it. Yes, I would buy it. That is like the one candle scent that people love that smell. <laughs> you know, people get like baby fever. I feel like I get puppy fever. Like oh, I yeah. just want more puppies. Yeah, I just dogs. want the puppy to snuggle. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that candle would give me that feeling for sure. Um, and then a fun comment we had from Heather McInnes. She taught me how to say your last name correctly. Uh, she said, achievement unlocked, confetti for me. Yay. Yay. And then uh, she also said, we're staying up late for this. I love it. I believe she is also in Australia. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I can't stay up. I think I went to bed last night at 9.15. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I was so dehydrated. It was so funny because Kevin was asking me this week, you drink all this tea. How do you fall asleep at night? And I was like, oh, I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I put on, um, I think it's kind of like an ASMR thing, but Kimberly's version of ASMR. I wear these headphones and they're actually getting ruined like the foam is starting to come off so i was i need to look up if they have a um like a warranty um not that i have anywhere i could go to take them to get fixed but um i basically play random stuff and uh, it just plays all night on youtube mm -hmm. and i've been watching this one channel i my kids have they um they think I've lost my mind and it's actually really funny. It's called Mr. Max TV, it's a cockatoo. And I just watch it all day long. And it's just this random bird and he talks and he's funny and I don't know what he says. And um, <laughs> so when I want my kids to leave the bedroom, I or like if I just really have had enough of their wrestling, I'll put the cockatoo on because they think it's annoying and they'll just get up and leave. They're like, I am not gonna watch that. You're so crazy. <laughs> oh. So that's like the, the fun thing is like now I just put the cockatoo on and they leave. If I want to get rid of them, which is so bad. But mm. we all know that that happens. All right. Uh, so we got a few questions here from Gianna Gorsuch. I am sewing Holly, the Halloween fig sampler block of the month. Received block one last month. Will each new block be released at the same time? And if so, what day? Yes, um, we'll have to have somebody answer you in the comments because um, I don't know the day off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And it's sold out, so it wouldn't be online. So um, Kathy would have to let us know what day that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know where I can find that information, but not sitting on my computer, I can't. All right. um, and then. And I'm halfway done with that one. I need to pick that back up. 
uh, from Susan Ingalls. Will the paper pieces come with the quilt kit? Or I secure? am not sure on that. I am thinking not. But I actually don't know the answer, but I don't. I'm like, I would say 90% no. From Connie Stanley, would the pre-sale be a beginner-friendly quilt? I think it's super easy. Um, yes, I would think it's beginner. I think the border, doing all of the flying geese might get a little difficult. But other than that, I think it's very doable. And I think anytime you're a beginner, if you break it up and you don't try to attack something all at once, it will really make it easier for you, whether it's this quilt or any quilt. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then from Amy Davis, do you have any tips for building a stash? So I don't have a big stash. I do have much bigger stash now than I used to. I just keep all my fat quarters together and my layer cakes together. I generally will buy um, anything Lori Holt, anything Fig Tree, anything Vanessa Gertzen, anything Bonnie and Camille, anything Fig Tree. If I like it, I buy it and I just leave it there. And um, the only other style that I will buy every now and then is if there's like a kid line that's really cute, I will buy it. Um, I do have friends at my age having kids still or grandkids. So it's funny because um, some of my friends had kids really early and some like a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's always fun to have something kid friendly. So if you need a quilt that's really fast or something, you just need a baby quilt, you can just go and get it. But I only buy stuff that I know that I eventually will use or that I just love, but I do try. I would say 90% of the time, I only buy for what I have that I know that I'm going to make. Um, I try not to have a lot of extra fluff. Like, even with groceries, like, we run out of groceries all the time because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have a few members and super chats that came in. A new member, Diana Bennett. Welcome, Diana. Thank Yay. you. And then we had a super chat from Citadel Mom 2012, uh, MJ Starnes. And it's for $5. And they say, sending warm wishes from South Carolina, spending the morning organizing, quilting, and cross-stitch projects for the holidays. Thanks for all you and Fat Quarter Shop do for us. Thank you. Very generous. Thank you. So I did want to show you a couple of new things. Um, Fat Quarter Style is a book that we did. It is from 2014. Mm -hmm. So it is six years old, but it still lives on. Mm -hmm. And we did a quilt kit with it. It's called Blizzard, and it is using Ruby Star Society, and I love it. Ooh. Yep, um, Victoria made it, Mike quilted it, and it uses the Flurry collection. It's so cute. It is, and then the back is really cute, too. It's got little polar bears. And... Yes, it's very cute. Aww. So that is a new quilt kit we have. We have new bags. They just came in by Lori Holt. I just took it out of the plastic bag. It's called a Prim Project bag. I've been using mine for cross stitch, but what you could do, um, can you scroll to the, you could um, use it for quilting and when you go to retreats, the medium design boards will fit in here. So you could put um, cut pieces, like if you wanted to, you could put a design board, your cut pieces, another design board, put um, rubber bands around it and stick it in the bag and it fits perfectly. So, super cute. And then we got some new clocks. This one um, I actually took home and I didn't have anywhere to put it so I had to bring it back. It's called, it's a laundry clock. And then this other clock over here is brand new. They're Moda clocks. When we very first got their first clocks, um, they sold out. But this one has spools and they're mm -hmm. different colors. So, um, but I did, I took this home and then Kevin looked at me like, where are you gonna put it? <laughs> There's nowhere to put it. And I was like, oh yeah, so I had to bring it back. That's hilarious. Also, someone pointed out that the clock is not working. Yes, I did not put batteries in it, but it is set at oh, 10, well, 10 Yeah. We didn't put batteries. That's fine. Yeah. And then Planned a Quilt is by Shannon Gilman Orr, and this is like her maybe third or fourth version. It's a brand new binder. I'm going to kind of flip through it and just show you the different things in it. She has different like um, 
graph paper and then dotted paper. And then she has stuff where you can put notes. There's different sections. It's like each project has where you can fill it in. And this is new and I thought it was really nice. All of her stuff in the past has sold really well. I've never used these just because it's a little big for my sewing room. But um, I think it's really nicely done. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to kind of flip through it. So that is brand new. Again, it's called Plant a Quilt. But she's done some previous versions. So. And last week I showed you our brand new economy paper and a demo on it. So just reminding you about that. And we also have the size guides online for you. Yeah. If you want to use either the six inch or the 12 inch and what kind of quilts you can make with it. And I did want to let you know, we got in some new elastic that is the skinny elastic and five yard cuts. So you could just search like five yard elastic. Um, elastic was one of those things that was super hard to get in the beginning of all of this. And now we have more. So I just wanted to let you know we have more. Um, I think we have enough to last. So hopefully we do. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show you this. This is a brand new needle book. And there's a tutorial on Lori Holt's YouTube channel. You can go subscribe to Lori Holt's YouTube channel and it will show you exactly how to make this. So on the outside, she put the prim charm that we sell. This is her lace. This fabric is prim and she has a pocket in here and then she has it to where it's big enough to where you can put an RFL spool, a small RFL spool. So and then she's got her prim sheep needle minder in there and she also has needles in there. So this is a brand new YouTube channel that you guys have to check out. Um, she's going to do a lot of stuff on there and what her goal is is to have standalone projects and they don't exactly have to be a quilt or something like that like she's got some painting tutorials um, and this is so cute i feel like i could make one but i got so lucky she made it for me so that is new um so definitely check out her youtube channel it's called Lori holt and um she has a lot of subscribers for like just starting so that's super exciting for her yeah. Yeah, her channel's growing really fast. It's awesome. Yeah, and then um, the only other two things I have that are new are we have two new needle minders by Bonnie and Camille. One is a sewing machine and one is a bee. And so you could use this for, you could put it, um, it has like a magnet back. You could put it on um, like your quilt when you're binding or you could put it on your cross stitch. Or you could just put it on, um, like what I will do is I put them on my my refrigerator, you can't put magnets, but my dryer, you can. Oh. Yes, yeah, so you can put them on your dryer or with, and you know, because sometimes I just like the cuteness. So that's what I'm going to do with mine. But let me know, guys, if you have any questions. I am super excited about this stitchery sampler. Um, I love it. I love that it's like Joanna's fabric. The fabric is called Figs and Shirtings, and um, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to make mine exactly like hers. So I took a photo. Or I had somebody take a photo of every single block and I'm gonna and I have it printed out so that it'll make it easy when I'm cutting mine I don't have to stop and think I can just copy exactly what she did oh my um they uh, uh I forget their name the username uh for the person who we asked to share the picture of their dog their dog is huge I can't pop the picture up for you right it's now it's not a puppy then it it's, is a puppy it's a it's they're like hugging her and they're like the same height when she's like holding oh my her. gosh so my aunt and uncle have these black I don't know what they are they're 200 pounds dogs and um my uncle always really liked big dogs like before he got married and his wife was always like I do not want a dog I don't want a dog and then their kids got old enough and I remember one Christmas, they were like, he was like, oh, I'm going to get a dog. And she was like, oh, you're not going to get a dog. And now they have these dogs. They're so big. One of them they rescued. Um, like they drove to like, they live in Dallas. They drove to like Alabama. And they found this dog. And they basically, he was like in a bad home. Like he was dirty. He had mm -hmm. fleas. It was horrible. But they rescued him. But those dogs are huge. Mm -hmm. And my aunt's like 100 pounds soaking wet. Like she's like super skinny. They're like that. I oh wonder what God. they're called. I don't know. Uh, but their names are Bigs and Smalls. 
Oh. I don't know why they came up. I mean, I don't know why, because uh, they're both big. Yeah, they're both big dogs. But oh. yeah, one of them they rescued, and then one of them I don't know where they got. Uh, and then question from Teresa is that skinny elastic soft enough? Yeah, it's very like pl pliable or bendable. Oh. And I'm so lucky I haven't made a mask yet. Um, Gina Till made me some masks. Thank, she saved my life. Let me tell you. Thank you, Gina Till. It's right here. This is the mask she made me. I wear it every day. Look, oh. it's like I've washed it a million times. But Gina made it, and you can tell that I've been wearing it all week because it's got makeup in it. Oh. <laughs> um, and then she made some for my kids, and so it's great. Um, the only person who's used it, though, is Emma because they haven't gone anywhere. Um, but, yes, uh, so so Emma, next week, um, they have a – so her dance team, you have to do so many hours. Well, she hasn't been to the studio since March. Wow. She went once to try out for next year, and they spaced it out where it was, like, half the audition time – they did it it was really well done and then they did like by alphabet instead of just jamming everybody in so she went one day like for like an hour and she has a intensive next week and it's a full week and um they have squares on the floor but they want them to dance with the masks on mm. so um so i just got the email this week and so they said adidas makes some that are breathable so of course just like us adidas is behind shipping so um, I bought one so that she could use it next year. But then um, Kevin said he we have a Dick's Outdoor Sporting right by our house. Like, literally, we dr drive by it. It's right there. So we're going to go in there. Well, we, meaning Kevin, because <laughs> um, I don't really know that store very well. He's going to go see if he can find one. Um, so we'll see how next week goes. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of people are suggesting Newfoundlands as the dog breed. Yes, Newfoundland, yes. Maybe I'll get a picture of them and show you. They're huge. Uh, and, and they sleep like, um, like on their floor, they have like um, tile that like, just tile. And that's where they sleep at night is in the kitchen on the tile because, and they just take up the whole kitchen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because they're like so hot and yeah. they're like fluffy. They're yeah, black and they're, they're fluffy. Oh. But it's funny because my uncle definitely won that argument. Like, it weighs more. Like, those dogs are huge. Mm -hmm. And they're really nice. Mm -hmm. But she has a hard time. I will say she has a hard time walking them. Mm -hmm. Like, she told me one time about walking them. She was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> um, and then Marsha Baker said uh, maybe their their names are for the rapper Biggie Smalls. I don't think so. Okay. Because um, my uncle doesn't listen to rap. I don't think so. Uh, but I know that when they got the first one, they named him Biggie. And then when they rescued the second one, they all of a sudden had a dog named Spalls. But yeah, I don't think so. I don't, mm. he doesn't listen to rap. So yeah. I don't think so, but uh, <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Okay. And from Nadine Merrick, could you use felt as the pages in the needle book instead of wool? She used batting. Oh. Yeah, so she just cut batting. It's um, batting. And she, her videos are great because what she does, um, I always call her and interrupt them. Uh, what she does is on Fridays, her daughter, Cassidy, who is lovely, comes over and helps her film. And so they film the whole thing from start to beginning. And then they go back, edit it. And then she does the voiceover mm -hmm. and they add it. And so it's much less stressful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I watched it, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and then I said something like, oh, I'm going to love it. She's like, well, how did you see it? I'm like, I watched your video. She was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> so funny. That is funny. But um, I don't know what day she's coming back. She'll have to tell me when she's coming back. Yes. I think oh. she's coming back tomorrow. Lori did say it's wool and not batting. Oh, it's wool, not batting. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and then from Angela Stoudinger, when will Prim Village quilt kit be in stock? So Prim was delayed. Uh, by customs I got that update yesterday I would say two to three weeks but it got something happened in the XPO facility whatever that means so uh, it is delayed but it is in America but it is at the customs port right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. so two to three weeks okay. from Jacqueline Woodward uh, Woodard sorry question for Kimberly does she spoil piggy oh my gosh that dog is so bad 
He is so spoiled. So oh. he um he is so spoiled. So he um yeah, I spoil him. He um let us see his routine is in the morning, like at night he will not snuggle. He will not have anything next to you, but in the morning he'll come and lay by you and snuggle. He goes to daycare some days, three days a week. He wants to go every day, but I'm like, okay, no. You can stay home. He take we take a walk at seven thirty every night. He eats before, after, and then around eight or nine o'clock, he will come and just stare at me until I give him treats. Aww. Just sit there and stare. And then if I don't do it, I have a, um, like a, what do you call it? Like a lap board. He does this. He'll be on the other side. He'll go on the lap board with his hand Aww. until I give him a treat. He's but I do have to be careful with him. Um, he can't have like too many things because I, so I give him chicken and turkey but he can't have ham and I have to chop it up and then I only give him milk bones or greenies and that's it because he'll get sick because mm -hmm. I don't know those dogs are like they have a sensitive stomach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from Julie Conway do you ever use your Cricut to cut fabric no I don't have a Cricut I love to cut fabric. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole world. I wish I could just cut quilts all day long and never sew. Um, so uh, I actually, I think I would probably cry if I did a Cricut because I wouldn't. I think that'd be great to have though if you wanted to do applique mm -hmm. or English paper piecing, it would make it easier. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't even know that I have anywhere to put one of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, from Kaylee Rich, do you use triangles on a roll, triangles on a roll paper for the quilt? I use it for anything and everything I can. So I just figure out what size I need and I always use it. Would you use it on that one? Yep, so um, I will probably use it on, oh, there's no triangles on a roll. There's no uh, half square triangles, so no. But I will probably use the, I'll probably figure out how to do these with the Eleanor Burns Flying Geese Ruler. And these, and these, the flying geese, I will probably do those that way. I will probably chain piece these. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, anything I can do to speed it up. So I do do a lot of converting. And um, like, for example, last weekend, I was working on Moda Blockheads and I have a whole binder of all the things. And so um, we had to go get something for one of the kids, something that was like, I don't remember what, so Kevin drove and I just sit there and I'll write out what I what you're gonna end up with and I back into numbers so that when I'm in my sewing room, I'm just like going really fast. And I've gotten so many comments that say, well, why do you go so fast? It takes the joy out of it. I'm like, no, it doesn't, I can make more. The faster <laughs> I go, the more I can make. <laughs> That's great. Uh, from Amanda Dews, are you going to sell the Girl Power uh, line yes. from Riley Blake? Yes, and we are working on getting that on our coming soon page. It looks awesome, and we are yes. also working on designing an It's So Emma pattern with it, yes. so that, um, but we haven't designed it yet, but yes, it, it might not be on our coming soon page, but yes. I'm very excited for that line. Yeah, um, I like all the like colors, yeah. and yeah. Um, from Susan Griffin. Oh, she says, we have a Newfoundland so loving giant, gentle giant. Yes. Yeah, they, she's, yeah, they're really good dogs. <laughs> uh, from K. Rob, we need to know, did Kimberly watch the new Unsolved Mysteries? Oh, yeah, I watched it in one day. Whoa. Okay, so Unsolved Mysteries is a new thing on Netflix. I've watched a couple things. So I watched that. I thought it was really well done. I loved how they had such a variety between them. I thought it was great. I watched the David, I don't, y'all are gonna, I don't even know his last name. He's like a music producer. David um, Power, something like that, I don't know. He's like a music producer that did a lot of stuff for Whitney Houston and the movie The Bodyguard. He's supposedly really famous. It was really good. I watched that on Netflix. And then I watched Walter Mercado or Walter Mercado. Mercado. Yes. I don't know who he is. So I told <laughs> Lily that I was confused watching it because a lot of what they talk about in there refers to the TV channel mm -hmm. and the TV show. And then when they show it, they translate, but they don't translate the TV show. Oh. So I was a little bit lost because part of it's in Spanish, but it was really good. I thought that was really good. Um, I watched um, Truth and Lies on Hulu. I did get Hulu. I've watched a couple of those, and Hulu has a lot of good stuff. I've been missing out. Um, so I've watched a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, those two Netflix documentaries, those were good. 
the Walter one, it was good. I was just lost because I, and then I was mad because he was like showing him on Raph, Sally Raphael, Sally Raphael, and then like um, Donahue and Geraldo. I'm like, I used to watch all this. How did I not know who this guy was? <laughs> so I still, and I still am confused because mm -hmm. I'm not, was he an astrologer? Was he a psychic? I'm so confused on it. He's technically an astrologist, astrologist but then yeah. sometimes he would say other things so yeah i was kind of confused on it um yeah I'll, I, I'll watch it and let you know what's up yeah you're gonna have to fill me in <laughs> but it was really good um i thought it was really well done I, and then there's also a documentary on hulu with um bill he's like the rolling stones bassist bill wyman and i started that one it's pretty good i haven't finished it yet i like to watch documentaries about anybody even if it's um like, I've never heard of half the people, like, those two people I just talked about. I don't know who they are. I just watched it. Mm -hmm. I was texting Lily, though. I'm like, yeah. have you heard of this guy? I was like, yeah, I grew up watching it. She's like, oh, and I guess I spelled his name wrong, and you corrected me. I oh, was like, I, 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 don't I just know. wanted to make sure we were talking about the same person. Yeah, well, I just, it was on Netflix, and I just was like, oh, yeah. But it was, like, all in, like, not all in Spanish, but they translated it. They just mm -hmm. didn't translate all of it. Mm -hmm. So if you know no Spanish, like, I don't know any Spanish. I should. Mm -hmm. I live in Texas. If you know no Spanish, it's really hard. So if I would have watched it with Kevin, who does know a lot of Spanish, it would have been easier. Or if I would have watched it with Lily, because I could have mm -hmm. said, okay, well, what is that? Because mm -hmm. it just was hard for me to connect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a couple of the things. So I was lost in a couple of sections, but it was good. Mm -hmm. All right, we have several questions here. I'm going to ask the quilting ones first, and then um, okay. the uh, TV uh, crime-related ones after. Uh, from mom question for Kimberly do you own a long arm machine or do you get someone to do it for you no I do not own a long arm that is not on a bucket list at all I get Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti or Mike from my long arm quilter dot com to do it uh, and have you ever quilted your own quilt like a couple of times I do have the Sashiko machine by Juki no not oh, Juki okay. Janome, Janome. And I've done that a couple of times. I do like that machine. Um, but yeah, no, I generally, I generally don't have time to. Mm -hmm. So Gina's really great because I can send it to Gina and she will do the binding. And so that's like a huge lifesaver right now. I actually love to do binding. It's I actually love, I would rather bind than piece. That's how much I love it, but I just don't have the time. So Gina has really helped me out because she's willing to do that and she does a great job. So mm -hmm. that really helps me out with time. From Robin Hen Henrich, uh, do you, how do you figure out how much extra fabric you need for triangles on a roll? If you have a kit, will you have enough fabric? You should because they're the same width you would normally cut. Like if it's two and seven eighths, the triangles on a roll is still two and seven eighths. Uh, from Kathy Gist, do you have any suggestions for fabric collections for the snowflake mystery quilt other than Christmas? Oh, I think you could use anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you could use anything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do kid. I wouldn't do like a quilt. I wouldn't do kids. Mm -hmm. It would even look good in Halloween. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything that was like a kid because mm -hmm. it has so much white. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, anything. Anything. If you like the fabric, it will look good. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes down to like when I have a stash or when I do a quilt or when I do these live streams, I just pick what I want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as long as I enjoy doing it, I'll be able to finish. Mm -hmm. We also had a sample maker on staff make it with grunge, but they flipped, like they used a white yes. jelly roll and then the grunge was the background. Yes. That looked really cool. Yeah. And that's on a previous, I think it was gray, right? Gray and white. Uh, I think like it was gray on the outside and white on the inside. Bluish gray, I think. Yeah. Um, Sue Cleek also let us know Baby Lock makes Sashiko. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have it. I just I was like, wait, who does make it? I don't know. I have it. I just know I have it, and I know how to use it now. Mm -hmm. Haven't used it in a while. I need to pull that back out. Yeah. Uh, Michelle L. also pointed out that she just noticed that the clock doesn't keep time. It does if you put batteries in it. I just yeah, have not so, put batteries in it. Yeah, so we're going to sell these. So this is where the battery goes. Yes, I, it's not just for show, I promise. Yeah, no, it's it, they work. It's just not gonna really stay here, so. Yeah. Um, okay, and from mom, have you heard of murder mystery quilt? Every block you sew holds a piece of the puzzle you quilt through the year to catch the killer. No, I don't know if I wanna combine my personal and my, <laughs> I don't know if I wanna cross those. Yeah. 
Um, okay. And then Rhonda W is asking, have you watched The Eleven? No. What is that? I don't... The Eleven? No, I don't know. Let us know what it is, Rhonda. And so, guys, like, I just watch documentaries or biographies, autobiographies, anything that's real. If it's a drama, I'm not watching it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm all up in the Jeffrey Epstein case, though. I'm so excited they they arrested Ghislaine Maxwell. Ooh. I just hope that she doesn't get off because she does have a deal. He signed a deal in, like, 2000, the early 2000s, that basically made him and all his co-conspirators exempt because he got some sweet deal. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm hoping that she's not able to use that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But she's got really good lawyers. I mean, she's got really good lawyers, so that's that's going to be mm-hmm. tough. Yeah. Um, from House of Stitch and Stash, uh, Kimberly, what did you think of the episode with the creepy dude? Oh, I thought that was, like, disturbing. I thought that I felt sorry for the kid, like the son of the lady. That guy is, like, he seemed like maybe, um, I kind of felt sorry for him. I felt like maybe there was some kind of, like, imbalance or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I almost didn't, like, a lot of people said he was creepy. I kind of felt like maybe it was beyond that. Like, I felt like maybe there was something wrong. Like, maybe he had brain damage. That's how it came off to me, rather than creepy. It's like, there was some kind of brain damage or something. But I could be interpreting that wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had a few people asking if you would come to their house to cut their fabric. Oh, <laughs> you paid me a lot of money. <laughs> post, Post-COVID, of course. I'm pretty bored right now. Oh. Uh, I'm pretty... I'm pretty desperate to do anything right now. Um, and a few people are also wondering if you saw Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. No, I saw the previews and was like, there is zero chance I could get through that. I think yeah. if I watched that, I would be like out of my mind. <laughs> no. Like, that's not for me. I am not into that stuff. Like, I don't like plays. Like, like she, Lily always references Hamlet, right? Hamlet. Yeah, I do make Hamlet references. Hamlet. I'm like, what? I don't know. I don't know that story. Like, I did horrible at English. English literature, oh my gosh, I did horrible. I would sit in that class in college, and the teacher would be talking about, like, how in the book it means this. And I'm like, it doesn't mean, I don't, I just (laughs) never can connect the dots. So that's why I don't watch dramas and stuff, because it's, like, very creative. And for me, sometimes things are black and white, and I can't. But yeah, no. And it was so funny because Kevin Tech, he, well, we email a lot. We don't talk that much. He emails me a lot. And he emailed me a link up to Hamlet. And he said, not Hamlet, Hamilton. And he said, this is supposed to be some kind of big deal on Disney or something. Do you know about it? And I was like, yeah, but it's not for us. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, one of my kids would like it. One. Mm. But, um, yeah. no, I can't. It's all just, okay, this sounds, I don't want to sound bad or anything, but it's all just too much. It's all just, I don't have an appreciation for all that. I don't understand it. And then there's a lot of hidden references. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna understand any of that. Like I don't connect. Like if you read Shakespeare and you connect like the, what it symbolizes, I will get none of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. None of that. I always did really bad on all the testing that was um, comprehensive reading. And Emma does not so great on that too. And I'm like, oh, well, you got that from me. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you got your really good math scores from me, and you're really not so good on the other. But it's um, but then we have one kid that's, like, opposite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, everyone's different. So Because I really enjoy, like, what you're talking about, like, how you don't enjoy, like, trying to find the references. I'm like, I love this. I want to yeah. do this. I, and, you know, it makes me feel inferior to watch something mm-hmm. like that. Because mm-hmm. you would go back on Reddit and read it, and you'd be like, what? None mm-hmm. of that connects. <laughs> so I don't want to, I just don't think I would get it. I don't think I would mm-hmm, mm-hmm. understand it or get it or, I don't know. It's a lot of noise, too. Okay. Um, and a few people were asking if you could uh, tell us again what the show you have been watching is. It's called Truth and Lies. And it must have been some type of ABC special that must have been on at night. And so there was one on, like, um, the Menendez Brothers, um, I don't know, Jody Arias. I just kind of pick the ones that I like, but it's it's a little bit longer than an hour, so that's what I like about it is that it's gonna hold my attention because I do that when I stitch. When I work, like when I go back to my office, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my headphones on because I can work more efficiently if I have 
background noise on and I do both at the same time and I can go faster because I get less distracted because mm -hmm. it keeps me and Kevin is totally opposite he's like I don't know how you do that but to me I can work more efficiently if I have something in my ears mm -hmm. whether it's background noise like at home I'll put on the news not the news gosh no not the news but you know something even if it's like the PBS channel even if I'm not even paying attention to it something uh, from Kay Lavati, let me know if I pronounce that right. Uh, she said a cast member in Hamilton got her start at their local dance studio, uh, Sacha, Sasha Hutchings, and she says her daughter danced with her. Tell Emma to keep dancing. Yeah, I mean, I hope she does. Mm -hmm. um, I hope all my kids can do, like, sports. Mm -hmm. And um, two of my kids really love basketball, so you can't do basketball right now. One likes baseball. So he's been doing baseball, but it's, I think the Saturday is the last game. And then I'm pretty sure they're not going to open it back up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I hope that this doesn't, I don't know, like I'm just trying to find the bright side in all of this. Like the one thing that is great is my kids have gotten, they're fighting more, but they're much closer than they used to be. Mm -hmm. So even though they um, fight, they like really like each other a lot more. Or like they know each other more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're doing, um, they do scavenger hunts. Like two of them will create a scavenger hunt for the other two. So that's kind of cool. Okay. And Rhonda W. said the 11 is about the murders in Galveston, Texas, investigation of the murders that happened in the 70s. Oh, yeah. That's that guy, Robert Hurst. Robert Durst. Mm. Yeah. I'll watch that. I probably watched it already. But yeah, Robert Durst. Yeah. That was probably him, right? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And Janet Sweetlove says, where is the best place to post pictures to share? Kimberly Stitch Squad. Yes. That is our Facebook group. Uh, yeah. And I haven't been on there it. as much. I'm sure you guys have noticed. I'm just off social media right now. Because mm -hmm. to me, my life is all about like positive stuff. And I don't want to see all that stuff. And if y'all negative in my group, I'm just going to delete it. Like, don't do that. I don't want that. I'm not interested. Hmm. Uh, okay, and then I think I missed a question earlier from Char Charlotte Burkhart. She was having trouble signing in to YouTube on her iPad and was asking me if there was a reason. Um, I think iPads just tend to be kind of funky with YouTube is my best guess. Uh, if you're having trouble signing in, it also helps. Um, like if there's other people logged into the same iPad on different accounts to like log them all out and then log in. I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments uh, after the live stream if it does not. So guys, I want you guys to have a great weekend. I'm not sure what I'm going to show next week, but I'll come up with something fun. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, we wait. had a super chat and a new member that I missed as well. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's super chat from Sunshine Girl 74 for $3.99, and it's a pair handing a cup of coffee or tea Aww. in this case. Thank you. Thank you. And then new member Karen Rabbis. Welcome, Karen. Awesome. Yay. Okay, Thank now you guys. Sign up. So have a great weekend. Bye, guys.